What if one billion people across the world practiced emotional intelligence, or even just in Europe? Whether you are in Sweden, Spain, or Slovenia, or somewhere in Europe, come and join us for another six questions about six seconds in Ireland. And today, our guest, my guest, is Justine McGrath, who's based, I think, in Dublin, Ireland. Welcome, Justine. Thank you very much, David. Great to be here. Yeah, a pleasure to have you. And I'd love to just ask you to share a moment here about yeah who you are and, and what you're doing in Ireland. Sure. Uh, so I live in Dublin, in um, North County Dublin, actually, in a small village called Lusk. And I am an executive coach and trainer, um, but I became involved with emotional intelligence uh, about 10 years ago. So um, and I've been um, involved with Six Seconds now for a few years doing emotional intelligence work. Excellent. Well, we're going to find out more about that from you shortly. But I want to first focus on Ireland and ask you our first question. How is EQ seen in Ireland? Well, do you know what I've noticed, David? In the last five years, I've seen tremendous growth in, in people being much more aware of emotional intelligence. So, for example, I've seen courses in in companies as as sort of unique and different as things like in the agricultural sector and in the engineering sector. I saw that Engineers Ireland were running a course in emotional intelligence, which I thought was really interesting. And I personally myself have had a lot more interest in, you know, people coming to me and asking about courses. So I think there's a long way to go in terms of really getting it to the masses, so to speak. But I definitely think we're on the right track. Wonderful. And that ties into my next question here. What opportunities have you had to bring uh, EQ to Ireland? So you mentioned that people are inquiring, uh, mm -hmm. but, but also picking up engineers, Austria and other groups, agriculture. Yeah. Um, but are there other ways in which uh, you've been able to, to talk about EQ? Yeah, definitely. I think what has been interesting is that I would have predominantly worked and I still do predominantly work in the private sector. So I would work in, in companies in different sectors such as pharma and IT and finance. But I've recently had a lot of interest from the public sector. So I'm currently teaching emotional intelligence in the civil service in Ireland, which is, you know, a really fantastic opportunity uh, mm -hmm. to bring emotional intelligence to a much broader base. And obviously, the civil service, very, very important group of people. So, you know, it's it's a great opportunity to spread the word about emotional intelligence in, you know, throughout those departments and throughout the, the people who are doing the work on the ground. Oh, wow, that's great. Is that through workshops and coaching and some keynotes and things? Yeah, so I would be doing predominantly training courses, um, and then in the pub in the private sector, I would do EQ coaching mm -hmm. and do sometimes I do um, speeches and write articles. As it goes across a whole gamut of different things. Yeah, fantastic. Yeah, that's that's great uh, and uh, good for. I guess do you do you write only in English, or is there anything produced in Irish? I've, I've I went oh. last year. <laughs> Irish this is where I'm going to shame myself now and say, no, I definitely, I wish I could write articles in Irish, but no, yeah. I do not speak Irish. So no, not in Irish. I would love to be able to and something I definitely should do. Sure, sure. And thinking uh, about the, 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 the need for emotional intelligence, and as you know, we have our competencies like I have here on, on screen mm -hmm. with our KCG model, which I know you're familiar with. Which uh, skills or competencies do you think are most needed in, mm. in Ireland at the moment? So for me, I think um, increasing empathy is a key one because what I'm still hearing in a lot of organizations is there are still too many managers and too many director people at high levels who are too aggressive, who are too, they're not putting themselves in the shoes of their employees. They're not listening to their employees. So I think that's definitely one. But I could take that even a step back and say they need to start with self-awareness. So I think for me, self-awareness is the key. So that's another one. Um, and two that I think are really important that just I have found great um, that there's been great progress when people have looked at their intrinsic motivation and their optimism. Because I think those are really important traits and competencies for people in the workplace because it helps them to be more resilient. It mm -hmm. helps to drive them. Um, and they're really important traits. So I found, I think for me, those four are really key. Yeah. 
It's interesting you say uh, like too aggressive and, and maybe it's just in the business life because uh, mm. my experience of, of Irish people has always been the opposite. We go to a pub, we sit down. I, I recently came uh, earlier this year and people would immediately start to converse. But, of mm. course, we're talking about a professional environment here. So uh, yeah. do you think that's constrained by workplace culture and, and mm. you know, performance issues that, that pushes people to become yeah. a little bit more assertive and aggressive? Yes, I, I think you've absolutely hit the nail on the head there. It's actually is. It's very much down to workplace culture. And it I often see it in organizations where there's a huge amount of pressure and stress. Mm. So and that's when you just see things start to fall apart. And that's when I love to get into those places because then I'm like, OK, we need some emotional intelligence here. <laughs> you know, yeah. Great. I could help. Um, and, and, you know, and you really see the benefit of it. Um, but, yeah, that's why. But it's needed. It's it's needed because I'm still seeing those issues not across the board of course but yeah. just in too many too many instances that you know i'd yeah. like to reduce that and we live now i heard the term the other day in, in our uh we had a maria olson put on a webinar in regards to generation z but this idea of barney you know brittle things are aggressive they're they're it's, it, it builds on this vuca idea that we're all pressured and yeah. so like a pressure cooker we're yeah. under the stress and so at some point uh mm -hmm. co post covid hybrid working perhaps yeah. changes in economies uh, yeah. as well that uh, and of course you know uh, the weather uh, I know it's always raining in Ireland they say but but certainly just you know um, global climate changes and that mm. uncertainty pushes people towards um, these 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 big shifts um, yeah and news is shorter in a way yeah, absolutely. I totally agree. And I think what's interesting is what I always hear is whenever people have done some emotional intelligence training, they say, what a relief to just have taken the time mm. to not be under pressure and to step back and to be able to think about my own emotions. That's mm -hmm. always the, I always get that response because we are in such a fast paced environment now and people are under so much stress. Yeah. They don't have time to think about these things. You know, they're so busy just getting on with, with all of the, the responsibilities that they have. So I always get that response at the end of a training course or at the end of a coaching. It's like, oh, mm -hmm. the relief to just do this. It's, you know, yeah. it's, it's so great. So we need, need more people uh, doing that more often. I think, sure. which ties in nicely to question number four, which is what is your favorite way to develop your own EQ from what you have learned and practiced? And that, that may be other things, of course, that you've read or six seconds methodologies and materials. But yeah, what's your own favorite way to enhance your EQ? Well, I think it's an interesting one because what I really have found since I've started learning through six seconds is just that deeper dive. The, the, the way that I like to learn best is through conversation, through discussion. So for example, the pro circle groups that we, that we have in six seconds is a great way to connect with other like-minded people and to hear about their experiences with emotional intelligence. That's one of my favorite ways because I love a good chat. Um, I also do love, um, I, I do love to read. So I'm always looking out for the latest articles in on emotional intelligence. And my brother found one the other day. I was like, darn, how did I miss that one? <laughs> He found one in a, a business magazine because I'm always, you know, I'm signed up to everything related to EQ. So, uh, but he found one I had missed somewhere along the line. But um, yeah, I love to read and um, and I think then just training training courses as well. I think where you are meeting other people and you're developing. So just continual learning and that's the beauty about EQ. You're, I just feel as if you're never done. There's always more to learn. That's it. So we, we we move into different stages of life. We we have new challenges. We face uh, new complexities in organizations or you move a role or you as, as you do, you go into a new company. So it's a whole new situation. Uh, we bring our toolkit, but there's always plenty to learn. And I really feel you uh, walking the talk, Justine, which is, I think, also important. Um, in this day and age. Oh, I like to hope so. Yeah, I do. I do love it. I'm very passionate about it. Yeah. Um, yeah. And for yeah. those, uh, you mentioned the Pro Circle session. So for those in our network, perhaps who mm -hmm. are certified with us, you can join us monthly for these Pro mm -hmm. Circle sessions where we talk about all things EQ and have mm -hmm. a little bit of a moment of reflection for ourselves. Uh, I organize those so you could get in touch with me about those.
Mm-hmm. So thinking about, yeah, you mentioned you know, a, a several years now that you've been involved with us, Justine. Mm-hmm. So question number five is really just what has been your journey so far with us and how have you applied your certifications in mm-hmm. perhaps your business life or in your personal life as, as you'd like? Yeah. So I started my journey with Six Seconds a few years ago, and I was always intrigued by learning more about emotional intelligence. I wanted to become an expert. I I had decided that this was going to be my specialist area. And I mean, I had started before, you know, I'd started learning a little bit before I got, I found Six Seconds. But when I found Six Seconds, I was like, okay, this looks like This looks like the place if I want to become an expert. And what I liked about it was that, you know, they had the different streams. So you could go, you could become an advanced facilitator, you could go down the coaching route, or you could do so. It took me a while to figure out which one of those I wanted to, which training stream I wanted to go down. But when I decided to go down the advanced facilitator route, and so I've done all of the qualifications I'm up to. I've got one more to go, four out of five. Um, So so that started with unlocking EQ and then you do a lot of the profiles and you do the, you know, um, a lot of training, a lot of work around what it is to train in emotional intelligence and how to facilitate, which I think is fantastic. Um, And I just love the fact that it's such a deep dive. The courses are very detailed and very in depth and and you, you, boy, you don't just give certifications away. You make people work for them, which, (laughs) which is great because then you really know, because now I'm confident. I feel confident because Mm -hmm. I feel like I know what I'm talking about now because I've learned all of this and I've had to work for it. It wasn't just given to me. And that's what I love about it. It it, it gives you credibility and it makes you feel confident in your ability to discuss emotional intelligence. So that's, um, that's really been my journey. Yeah. With, with Mm -hmm. six seconds. Um, And I'm just starting to really apply all of those qualifications now to, to my clients. Yeah, so I guess a facilitator. You you mentioned you're a trainer, so it, it probably aligns quite well in your in the yeah. training methodology that we impart to to help you be a, a a trainer with emotional intelligence. Yeah, absolutely. Coach with emotional intelligence. So yeah, uh, yeah, that's great. Yeah. For those who are interested, again, uh, our facilitator pathway is five steps, but uh, and and as Justin said, they each build on on the next. And mm-hmm. I too have taken that training. I finalized mm-hmm. my facilitator, uh, advanced facilitator mm-hmm. this year, in fact, earlier this year. So completing one full path. But uh, mm-hmm. whether you're a trainer, a coach, or a facilitator, uh, mm-hmm. there is something for you. And even in the more mm-hmm. pure sense of facilitation, where we're talking about uh, you know, mediation and meetings and so forth, is, is mm-hmm. really interesting. Yeah. Yeah, what's it's great. Been favorite, what's been your favorite course so far? Yeah, your certification with us, Justine. Oh my gosh, that's I couldn't possibly pick a favorite. I <laughs> I, I love them all. Um, I, I I because they're all different. So I think yeah. that you get something different out of each of them. The funniest one, though, I think, was the unlocking EQ because when they they said you have to, you know, you have to start with unlocking EQ, and I was a little bit arrogant. I was like, I don't need that. I don't need unlocking <laughs> EQ. I know enough about emotion. You know, I don't need the beginner yeah. course. Boy, yeah. was I wrong. I yeah. learned. I learned so much on that course. And I think that possibly was maybe one of my favorites because I I actually discovered there was a lot that I didn't know that I thought I knew just in the very first course. Sure. So uh yeah, that was a that was a bit of an eye opener for me yeah. and put me back in my box big time. <laughs> <laughs> well, and I know that course in particular is designed really to unlock the six seconds universe. And as as now you've you've said you've taken that advanced pathway. So uh, it is an introduction, but it also allows you to work in our methodology to understand the viewpoint of six seconds. I often say it's about the language that we use, the definitions, the the way in which the learning philosophies interweave with the models uh, and really create a sort of holistic approach to emotions in the workplace, in our personal lives, in parenting, in families, situations as well. So um, it ties nicely. It's a really lovely comment you shared. With our last question, Justine, what if the world, what would the world be like if one billion people practiced EQ? This is our our real noble goal as an organization. So, you know, one billion, I I think we're getting closer each day. But what do you think certainly Ireland would be like if everyone practiced emotional intelligence? Oh, my gosh, it would it would be a very different place, I think. And I think it would be a much more empathetic place, a much more empathetic world. 
it would be a much fairer world. Uh, it would be a much kinder world. And I also think it would be a much more productive world mm -hmm. <laughs> because people would have the awareness. Uh, there wouldn't be well, they wouldn't be wasting time on uh, you know on on the, these behaviors that are that are not necessary because everybody would be aware of their emotions mm -hmm. and the emotions of others. So yeah, it would. It's it's an amazing um, when you see the progress that people make when they start to practice emotional intelligence. You really want that one billion people in the world to have it because you just mm -hmm. think it w it would make the world so much of a better yeah. place changing lives i guess and having that ripple effect out into the community yeah. yeah yeah well before we say goodbye and and thank you really for being part of this uh new series uh here justine i would like to offer you the chest is there anything that you would like the people of ireland to know in terms of uh you know what uh would be uh, something that that you think that would be important for them to take away uh, in terms of emotional intelligence specifically for your culture yeah, what I would say is that emotional intelligence is not just a soft skill. It's an absolutely essential set of competencies and traits and skills. And it can be learned. It's not It's not a fixed. It can be learned. And I highly recommend, highly recommend doing a course or speaking to somebody or just even reading, just even going on to, to Google and find a book about emotional intelligence, because it really can be life changing. And in terms of career and workplace, it will make you more productive and happier. And that's been proven. Great. So if people are in Ireland, uh, Justine, how can they get in touch with you? I know you're on LinkedIn. Yeah, they can find me on LinkedIn and they can find me at proactivecoaching.ie. So right. coaching.ie. Super. Well, thanks for joining us, Justine, and we'll see you soon. Thanks so much, David. I really appreciate it. Thanks for watching this episode of Six Questions for Six Seconds In, and where will we be next time?